Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Martin's United Church. We're so grateful that you joined us for worship this morning and happy Thanksgiving. Our online community check-in is at noon today, and if you get the church chat, you'll find the Zoom link there. Now, normally we have an in-person check-in at 2 p.m. at the church, but uh, you need to pre-register for that, and we didn't have pre-registrations for it. So it won't be happening this week, but please do pre-register by next Friday if you want to come next Sunday to the in-person gathering. And in fact, any event that takes place at the church these days requires that you pre-register. So please make sure you do that before the event so that we know that we don't have too many people coming. Hi, everyone. Children's Church is at 11 a.m. today. The Zoom link is in the church chat. I hope to see you there. I'm Maureen McPherson from the Outreach Committee. For the last few falls, uh, Outreach has invited you to donate any items of gently used winter clothing that you will no longer be, be using during the winter, and they are distributed to those in need. We're going to do that again um, this fall, although in a slightly different format due to the pandemic. And there are going to be uh, bins put outside the church on the last three Thursdays of the month between 7.30 and 4, and items we invite you to put items in those bins, and then they will be distributed. Uh, we'd ask you at this time to donate only winter items, as this is what the charities are asking for. Outreach is always very appreciative of the support that we receive from you, and I thank you very much on behalf of the committee. Good morning. I'm Pat Stewart, and I have the privilege to work with the Ministry by Phone folks. We are looking to do another round of calls this fall, and um, we would like to uh, connect with you. But in order for that to happen, we need some help. So as you can remember, or for those who are new, these calls are not asking for anything. They're not looking for money or time or talent. What we're looking for is um, uh, just a connection and a check-in. So in order to do that, we need between um, two and four prayer mates, and we need two callers, and if possible, I'd love to have a co-coordinator who could help me with this work. You can contact either Keith Hall or myself in the information in the MailChimp or last week's MailChimp or in the church directory, whichever you can find. Anyway, thanks so much and have a blessed Thanksgiving. Bye. Good morning, friends. I'd like to invite you to participate in the Contemplative Prayer Group, which is happening every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. in the Church Lounge. This is a program that we need you to pre-register for, so please let me know if you plan on attending by calling me, texting me at 306-975-0394 or emailing me um, at the address in the church chat. Really hope that you'll prayerfully consider being part of this group. Thanks and have a great day. Good morning, Don Cook here with the transition team. Uh, we're going to have another transition team meeting this coming Tuesday evening. And uh, for all transition team members, if you could check your email inbox for that Zoom link and uh, attend. Uh, really looking forward to the discussion and uh, seeing what the next steps uh, forward are in reopening our church. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kit Lowen, and I am a member of the Affirming Action Group, and I wanted to let you know that we are going to be meeting in the church on October 14th at 7 p.m., to kind of regroup and regather after our long time apart, just to see what we can be thinking about and planning for for the future of affirming activities in the church. So we're looking forward to seeing each other and we would also look forward to seeing you if, if you're interested in attending and becoming part of this really vital group of people. Um, if you're interested in coming, just let Jordan know so she can make the proper arrangements and ensure the, the space is prepared appropriately. Stay well, everybody. 
If you would like to hold an event or a meeting at the church, then please complete a building access request form and submit it to Brandy well in advance of your meeting or your gathering to be sure that we can accommodate your group at the time that you wish to gather. Our building access guidelines and the request form can be found on our website and you'll need to download the form to your computer to be able to fill it out. Then you can just email it back to Brandy. Or if that doesn't work for you, you can give Brandy a call and she can send you a copy. When you are coming to events at the church, please make sure that you use the ramp door on the south side of the church building to come in, unless you need the elevator, in which case you'll need to arrange with your group leader to meet you at the front door so you can come in that way and access the elevator. Our territorial acknowledgement is one way that we express our intention to live in right relationship as indigenous and settler peoples. However, words alone are not enough. So may our words be reflected in our actions as we seek to live with integrity and humility. So in the spirit of reconciliation, let us acknowledge our relationship with the indigenous people of this land. We, we acknowledge that we are, are gathering for worship on, on the, the traditional lands of the First Nations and the homeland of the Métis. We are all treaty people, bound by the understandings made in the agreement known as Treaty 6. We are so glad that you've joined us for worship today at St. Martin's. My name is Keith Hall. You've already met my ministry colleague, Jordan Cantwell. We give thanks for our tech team who have been producing our online worship since the beginning of the pandemic in March, Ken Glover and Kathy and Bob Anderson. We also give thanks today for our musician, Aaron Temple, who graciously agreed to fill in for Betty Lou Agnew, whose son is getting married this weekend. Congratulations, Annika and Russell. A special thanks to our scripture reader, Anna Schwanke, and to Isabel Cook for offering the prayers of the people, and to everyone who shared announcements with us this morning. We invite you now to center your hearts and minds as we enter into this time of worship by lighting our Christ candle. As we light our affirming and peace candles, we listen to these words of wisdom from St. Francis of Assisi. As you announce peace with your mouth, make sure that greater peace is in your hearts, for we have been called to heal wounds, to bind up the broken, and to call home any who have lost their way. Come touch our God says, I will fill your cup and then some. We come now to receive. Jesus says, I am bringing abundant life to all. We come now to share. Spirit says, I fill your hearts with love. We come now to love. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we gather in this virtual community as seekers, lovers, disciples and friends. We gather to give you thanks for the blessings of our lives and to replenish and refuel our spirits for the road ahead. We gather to learn the wisdom of your way and feel the warmth of your love. Bless our gathering as we join our hearts and minds together in worship this day. Amen. Amen. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Sing it. This is the day that God has made. 
Seems like a dream. It's too good to be true. When God returns our hands like tiles, we laughed, we sang, we couldn't believe our good fortune. We were the talk of the nations. God was wonderful to them, God was wonderful to us. We are one happy people. And now, God, do it again. Bring rains to our drought stricken lives so those who planted their crops in despair will shut hurrahs at the harvest. So those who went off with heavy hearts will come home laughing with armloads of blessings. This is a testimony for our ancestors in faith. Thanks be to God. Friends, please pray with me. Holy One, we give you thanks that you speak your word into our hearts, into our minds, into our lives. Tune us now into your word that we may hear what you are saying to us this day. Amen. 
There is a wonderful children's book called How Full Is Your Bucket? And in it, the authors say that everybody is carrying around an invisible bucket. And in the bucket is water. And the fuller your bucket is, the better you feel. And the emptier your bucket is, the worse you feel. So now I want you to imagine that you have a bucket. How full is your bucket? Are you feeling filled up and happy, secure, content? Or are you feeling depleted, empty, anxious, angry? In the book, the authors talk about some of the things that cause our buckets to become emptier. Things like harsh words that others may say to us, or things that embarrass us and cause us to feel shame or guilt or just inadequate. And when hard, scary things happen to us, they can really throw us off kilter. And it's like it spills some of the water out of our bucket. Also, when people are mean to us, it's like they've dipped right into our buckets. Pulled some of that water out. Well, I know that one of the things that empties my bucket is when I act like a jerk towards others. This often happens when I'm already feeling like my bucket is pretty low. So I'm not at my best. I'm cranky, tired, short-tempered. So I'm much more likely to snap at somebody or be insensitive towards them. And when that happens, I usually feel pretty bad about it afterwards. And that causes me to feel even lower. When our buckets are low, it has a very negative impact on our emotional well-being. It can even affect our physical well-being. We might feel depressed, sad, anxious, angry, grouchy, or like we just want to pull the covers up over our heads and tell everyone to go away. I think for many of us, this pandemic that we're in has been a real bucket emptier. It's added a level of stress to our lives and to the lives of everyone we care about. And that stress can color everything we do in a day. It can impact all of our interactions, making us crankier with one another. When that happens, usually at least two buckets lose a bit of water. The person who's been snippy and the person they've snipped at. So how full is your bucket right now? as you contend with the daily realities of living in a time of pandemic. Well, friends, the good news about our buckets is that the water doesn't just come out of them. Water can also go into them. Our buckets can be filled up again. There are so many things that can fill our bucket, and they don't have to be big things. A smile from a stranger on the street, a kind word from someone, praise for a job well done, a sense of accomplishment when we check something off our to-do list. Whenever we receive positive feedback or kindness from others, it fills our buckets. That feels pretty good. It eases our stress, it reminds us of our own goodness and all the good things in our lives. And interestingly, one of the things that can fill our buckets is helping to fill somebody else's bucket. When we do something kind for someone, we hold the door open for them or offer a word of encouragement, reach out when they're in need. It helps to fill their bucket, but it also makes us feel good, and that helps fill our bucket. So what are some of the things you know fill your bucket? Think about that. I know that when I take time in the morning to pray, to be silent and to immerse myself in God's presence before I start my day, I feel better. It fills my bucket and I go into the day with more joy, a sense of peace and with more love in my heart. I also know that getting outside and moving my body helps fill my bucket. That's why having a dog is such a blessing for me. 
at least once or twice a day, I get out into nature with a crazy, hairy beast who is so full of joy, I can't help but feel my bucket filling up. And I have to admit, it sure is bucket filling for me when my daughter or my partner remembers to say thank you for the, even the little things I do around the house. If I empty the dishwasher or clean the cat litter and somebody notices and said, hey, thanks, fills my bucket. What fills your bucket? Can you think of something right now that you or someone else has done in the last day or so that has helped to fill your bucket? Take a look inside that bucket of yours. How full is it right now? Our faith tradition also has much to offer us as we live through the, this bucket-emptying pandemic. The psalm that Anna read for us is a reminder of God's faithfulness in past times of trouble. It reminds us that we've faced hardship and overwhelming circumstances before, and we've come out the other side better and stronger. It reminds us that we are a community, that the struggles we are facing we face together. We're not alone. We've got each other, and God is with us. It reminds us of the importance of naming our concerns and asking for help. And perhaps most importantly, the psalmist gives thanks to God. Gratitude is one of the most bucket-filling strategies we can employ. When we approach life with gratitude, when we pay attention to and give thanks for all of our blessings, it completely changes what we see and how we feel. Gratitude tunes us into the goodness that is already in our lives. So when we are grateful, we find so many things to be grateful for. Just as when we are bitter, we find so many reasons for bitterness. Giving thanks can help to fill our buckets and the buckets of everyone around us. So take a moment right now and think of three blessings in your life, three things for which you are grateful. Just savor them. Say a silent prayer of thanks for each one of them. Now I want you to notice, how full is your bucket? One last question for us to consider today. How full are the buckets of those around you? Think about your family members and friends, people you live and work with. How are they doing? Do they seem like they're carrying around a full bucket? Or do they seem like their buckets are running dry? What can you do to add to their bucket. Remember, when we help to fill up someone else's bucket, it also helps to fill up our own bucket. I want to share a short story with you. I often shop at the London Drugs on 8th Street, and there's a cashier, a cashier there who I often see, and she is always friendly. She always has a smile on her face, and whenever I'm at her till, I find that I walk out of that store brighter than I walked in. So one day, several months ago, as she was putting my purchases in the bag, I thanked her for always being so positive, and I told her how good I feel when I shop there because of her good energy rubbing off on me. Well, much to my surprise, she started to tear up. And she looked at me and she said, I needed to hear that today. I've been having a really low day. I've been feeling pretty crummy about myself. Your words made a huge difference to me. That's how buckets work. She filled my bucket just by being friendly. So I said thank you, and my thank you filled her bucket. It gave her something that she needed. And knowing that I did that filled my bucket even more. Friends, this is Thanksgiving, the season of gratitude. Whether we're feeling like our, our buckets are full to overflowing, 
or nearly empty. May we choose to look at ourselves and our world and others through the lens of gratitude. May we give thanks for all of our blessings. And may we express our thanks to others and make a point of trying to help fill their buckets. And may you take time each day to notice how full your bucket is that day. And when it's getting low, do something to help fill it up. Remembering that when you do that, it almost inevitably helps fill other people's buckets too. Friends, please pray with me. God of overflowing, abundant love, we give you thanks for all the blessings you shower upon us when we are feeling empty, depleted, and overwhelmed. Fill us up with gratitude. Fill us up with hope. Fill us up with a sense of your presence that love, gratefulness, and peace might flow out of us to others. May all who are thirsty, all who are empty, be filled with joy, strength, and every blessing. Amen. Fill up my cup, fill up my cup, let it overflow. Fill up my cup, fill up my cup, let it overflow. Fill up my cup, fill up my cup, let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Been there. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as, bright shining as the sun, there's no less days, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amen, 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 amen. Let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, moving us to thanksgiving, not because of all that we have received, but because of your love of us. Move us to thanksgiving, not only for the bounty of the harvest, but for your ongoing presence in the world and your promise of abundant life for all. Let our thanksgiving be expressed in our generosity. Let our thanksgiving be expressed in our service. Let our thanksgiving be expressed in our compassion. Let our thanksgiving be expressed in our prayers of healing as each name from our community is read this morning. Marie, Norma, Diane, Troy, 
Lorna, Aaron, Gord, Jane, and family, Phil, Gail, Kay, Margaret, Esther, Eunice, Lillian, Murray, Phyllis and Bob, and all those affected by COVID-19, those who are ill, those who are grieving a loss, those who are isolated and alone. Let our thanksgiving be expressed as we take a moment now to offer our prayers of our hearts in silence. Loving God, move us to thanksgiving, not just today, but every day. May our cups overflow with gratitude and compassion as we gather our prayers, singing together the words that Jesus taught us so long ago. October 11th is National Coming Out Day. As an affirming congregation, we are here to offer support and care for anyone who is wrestling with difficult feelings and decisions around coming out about their sexuality or their gender identity to themselves, their family, friends, faith community, or others in their lives. Coming out is a big decision. We want it to be a safe and life-giving experience for you. So give us a call if you want someone to talk to. We are here for you. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear the sweet, the far off hymn That fills a
in the spirit of thanksgiving, go into the world this week, determined to share God's lavish love with all whom you encounter. And may you be blessed with an unwavering trust in God. May you walk with joy in the way of Jesus. And may the Spirit of God inspire and guide you all your days. Amen.